Hey, people, stop talking to Jeff. Like, send me the feedback. I mean, I get a lot of feedback. <laughs> people, I, I've sent you texts of like, hey, people I know. say, hey, do this. Or hey, like, you know? this is my channel, people. Stop sending it to him and put comments right. in the in the YouTube or something. Probably saying it wrong. Courtney's going to yell at me. <laughs> I call Jamal Chase all the time. Jamar. <laughs> I, I get all the names wrong. I'm terrible at names. No, I have his name ADD. is Jamar. It is? <laughs> <laughs> So then I call him the other one. <laughs> uh, a member, I don't know who it was, took a gun out and shot the gun and then picked up the bullet fragments and handed it to her and said, this is, remember this as your blessing. Now, I don't. What? Yes. Wait, okay. Let's back that up. There, so, you know. Oh, that setting. There's just thing out. Up. And I'm like, bitch. Bigfoot's not real. He's like, how do you know? So now we're at home <laughs> arguing about why Bigfoot's not real. My my shoes are... Shaq's worth a 22, man. My feet are not that big. <laughs> abnormally. That was the word that you used. They're Your not abnormally, are abnormally big. big. No, they're not. And then we could hear them and the audience could hear them in the recording. So... That's why I was saying we got to get you headphones to be able to do that. Who's your next guest going to be? I don't know. Um, I'm counting Candace or anything like that. Definitely uh, going to have Chad back. Did you watch? I got to watch some of it. I listened to most of it. Yeah. Um. Yeah, he he was good. I got good feedback from from some, some people. Um, and people are <laughs> all the feedback that I got was most of the feedback that I got was uh like. We want to know what happened at the lunch. Oh. <laughs> uh, so they're, uh, yeah. So I got to have him back at least to give us the update on the lunch, but and how that went, which I haven't talked to him about it yet. Um, which is another weird aspect of starting this podcast is now, um, people start to talk to me and I want to like stop talking because I don't, I'm like, oh, I want you to come on the podcast and talk about right. that. <laughs> Like, and so then, like, I find myself like trying not to talk to them anymore. <laughs> and I'm like, that's weird. Stop doing that. You could just say like, let's uh, set up a date. <clears throat> like, yeah, I can't probably. wait to hear about. It. Let's set up because those. If you have those instances, you could set up a like, hey, you available this week? Bam, there's your next person. Yeah, and just well, and I can have them. Be, and one reason why I have Streamyard is so that I can have people come in virtually. Mm. So even if they couldn't come in person in the studio, which obviously. I like this. I like this face to face interaction. <clears throat> they, um, I could have them do it from like their house, like on an iPhone or, you know, whatever. Which I guess we could test that part. I was going to text somebody and have them call in, but we could, I could, uh, I think I can send them a, a link. Let me do it this way. Copy. How should I do it? So if I did it from my house, could we make it to where it looks like we're still in the same building almost, like in the same room? Um, We wouldn't, it wouldn't look like that, no. Like, I mean. Well, I mean the wall. Well, the, it would still have us in the same type of framing. Right. Yeah. Just the decorations would be different. Yeah, like it, obviously it would be whatever's in your background. I mean, if I could get a green screen and then like figure out how to print <laughs> your wall off. <laughs> <laughs> and really fool everybody. Yeah, everybody yeah. Fool. Paper fool. They'll be like, something's going on here. I don't <laughs> quite know what it is. Let me try to email this to myself so then I can um uh because I don't think I can Are you recording yet? Yeah. Oh great. <laughs> you always change when you start recording. I kind of felt like you you were like you hear my voice inflection change or something. No, like uh the conversation the flow or yeah, whatever yeah yeah i know i was asking me what i was talking about before and I, totally i have no idea what i was saying before <laughs> well because i was just trying to get back to wherever it was that we were at i don't even know it wasn't where we necessarily were at. we was talking about the headphones all right let's do that and let's copy and paste see look people uh are just gonna follow along here while i do this if I don't cut this out, which I probably won't. So anyway, because <clears throat> um, 
What was I going to say? Um, yeah, because sometimes I don't know. Like, I just hit record, and then it's like, whatever happens, happens. If I have to, like, cut, cut us into some other starting point, yeah. then I will. Yeah, I think that's good if you... But especially in the beginning, I don't really care. Like, I kind of, like I said, I kind of like that the audience, especially our beginning audience, is um kind of on this amateur journey with me. Yeah. Like, and they have to, like, you have to sit through the awkwardness. Yeah, you have to go through the same pains. Yeah. <laughs> I kind of like that dynamic. Um, any uh, takeaways from the episode with Chad that you listened to so far? No, I think it was really good. Um, I got a lot of good feedback on it, that they're interested in hearing the rest of the stories. Uh, About Chad? Yeah. Oh, cool. <clears throat> hey, people, stop talking to Jeff. Like, send me the feedback. I mean, I get a lot of feedback. <laughs> people, I, I've sent you texts of like, hey, people I know. say, hey, do this. Or hey, like, you this know? is my channel, people. Stop sending it to him and put Sorry. comments in the in the YouTube or something. I mean, I'm comments just kidding, kind yeah. of, but. Yeah. Uh, Definitely interaction on our social media helps out a lot more than just sending me a text. But I do like getting the text and I do like getting the feedback. Um. All right, I'm just gonna send out text with the link and see what happens. Let's see if this guy. I won't even say anything. I'll just send the link. Um. Any other? I who else could I do? Um. All right, I'll just keep it. I'll just keep it for that for now. Uh, what no one else is really coming to, to mind but that's good what like what kind of feedback though i guess a lot of it's uh some of it's been like trying to do like what you said like learning how to edit cut in and stuff like that like yeah trying to cut down on the uh the time some of people say they're they're long they're long that's the most probably negative thing i get but most of it is pretty positive where they're interested and they want to have their opinion about it and like yeah. i love that like it you don't have to agree with me and right um that's kind of my hope too is that i have an audience that that isn't just a vacuum chamber right. of like like i'm not looking for just pats on the back constantly and you know that you know people always agree with me like i want people to be listening that that don't see eye to eye with me now, my, obviously, I'm presenting a perspective that I want them to consider, and and so that's like part of my desire is to hope that they will at least listen and be open to the perspective and not just be automatically like, right, thinking of how they respond would respond because that's um, I heard that a long time ago about the difference between listening, like mm -hmm. if you're actually listening, you're actually like open to what's right the person is saying. And that's like the definition of wisdom right really you know or maybe that's what i heard it from is wisdom is is listening to understand and yeah. i forget what the other part of it is but it's like or listening to respond like that's the i forget what they tied that the responding part to but uh but yeah so that's that's good i'm good that yeah i mean i get it both ways like yeah what you said i don't really agree with i kind of feel like joel was you know you know kind of agreeing along with you and i'm like oh yeah you know and sometimes we'll just keep talking like a lot a lot of times it happens at work and that's where a lot of my feedback comes from because i'm very friendly at work i'm friendly everywhere yeah so i'm always like hey listen to this podcast hey and then they'll listen and then at lunch or walking down the hall we just start talking about it and uh yeah it's easy conversation starter and so you know some of the bosses at work are involved and it's it's really fun um but then they'll send me like texts like hey listen to this podcast this is oh like what do you think reminds, about this like this yeah. reminds me of you guys or hey this is something you guys could talk about this is in so uh like the one i sent you i don't know if you listened to it i didn't but, i didn't know which one to listen to the link sent me to like the channel and so then there was like several yeah there's episodes. three episodes right now uh and i didn't have time to listen to him yeah the world so this lady just to give you a real quick breakdown brandon sent it to me mm -hmm. 
And uh, it was more of like, hey, you guys could probably bring this to light or talk about this. Um, it's about World Harvest Church, you know, <clears throat> which isn't like a super huge church. So a lot of people might not know that. But where is it at? It's I think it's I'm not 100 percent sure, but I think it's in Columbus. But I might not be correct. I didn't look it up. But I know they have had um, the, the, the pastor there is Ron Parse, Parse, I don't want to say his name, Parseman wrong or something. Probably saying it wrong. Courtney's going to yell at me. But anyways, <laughs> I was going to say, what you guys will discover is Jeff is really good at pronouncing and remembering names. So I'm terrible. <laughs> what was the football player that I always said <laughs> wrong? Knows, you remember man. that though? Yeah. There's like probably 20 of them. Oh, <laughs> I call Jamal Chase all the time. Jamar. <laughs> I, I get all the names wrong. I'm terrible at names. No, his name ADD. is Jamar. It is? <laughs> <laughs> so then I call him the other one. <laughs> uh, yeah, so anyways, I always have to guess uh, who he's talking about sometimes. Uh, he'll say somebody's name, and I'll be like, <laughs> okay. And then a lot of times I don't correct him anymore. I just let him go. Yeah, so. I mean, it's it's my ADD. I'm, all right, so I'm Ron terrible. Yeah, Parsons, so he's, a, he's the lead guy. Person. Well, this lady... <clears throat> used to work for them for she said four years as their hr director and she talks a little bit about why she oh, left you know what i can just look it up go ahead keep talking um and <clears throat> uh it goes into detail about kind of like their internal issues at their church um so it's very it's very interesting because i know world harvest has a lot of reach uh in in certain church areas yeah i've never uh, i've never heard of them not not a dig at them i just never heard no of them. yeah like they're not they're not i thought they were a huge church but uh they they're about the same size as like a city gate maybe a little bit bigger rob uh, parsley 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 yeah see i said parsman <laughs> so I rod know. didn't yeah. you call him ron maybe i did <laughs> <laughs> rod parsley yeah he's a tv host evangelist educator humanitarian and statesman yeah so it goes on more to talk about not like the church as like how they treat the members but how they treat their staff mm -hmm. and i think that speaks louder than anything about church yeah like if you're a big church and you have a big staff yeah. or even a small church and how you treat them, I think, tells you a lot about you as a church. Um, I could agree with that because there's more real stuff that happens. Yeah. Right? Like, interaction between, not to say that it's the way that inter I interact with my congregation or my church family is not real. But, but there's a side of me, there's a side of my lead pastor there's a side of the pastoral team that they don't get to see right and it's not that we're being fake towards them it's just a different type of well, it's interaction like, it's it's like you're a dad right you're yeah. a husband yeah. you're a son and you yeah, react to differently it. to all situations like yeah. i'm not going to talk to my dad like i would talk to my son you yeah. know um so in that perspective when i was listening to her the the things she gives and i mean these are detailed accounts and i don't know if she could get in trouble for it because she had like you know i don't know non disclosure oh really do you think she, she had to I don't sign know. an nda they, they, there that, was that would people, be kind of crazy there was people she said one of the reports she read like to me that's like an like an automatic like red flag right right well this <laughs> she goes on to this saying like you know when you go it's the first church she worked for i believe um because she came from the public sector and she was saying, like, you know, she was excited because when you go work for a church, you're thinking you're doing yeah. God's work. Yeah. And so you're going to experience it. this grace and this all this stuff that you're expecting because that's what they're preaching, right? Right. Well, that's not the case. She went on to an example of where she read this letter about somebody that was working there for um, seven months, it said. <clears throat> and I, I'm guessing there's two people that would work, maybe a couple but it was written in this perspective of, a, I believe, a lady that wrote it to her of her reg resignation letter. And in a meeting, um, and I didn't get the, I was listening to it like half-heartedly because I was doing something else. But she said in a meeting they had at their church, 
uh, a member, I don't know who it was, took a gun out and shot the gun and then picked up the bolt fragments and handed it to her and said, this is, remember this as your blessing. Now, I don't. What? Yes. Wait, okay. Let's back that up. So this this happened, where did this happen at? At the church? At church. So they were in like a staff meeting. In the middle of a staff meeting, staff he meeting. pulls out, draws his gun, and yeah, shoots I don't know it into the it ground was, or something. I don't know who it was. They didn't say who it was as far, but it was a person leading the staff meeting. Yeah, yeah. So some level of yeah, leadership. I'm not saying it was the pastor or something, but someone high up was leading the staff yeah. meeting. And she talks about before about how they use like shaming and all this stuff about and intimidation to get their staff to do certain things and just how they treat their staff like horribly yeah and she this isn't the hr director's experience this is a story she's reading from a lady from somebody else yeah and uh she said it was her first case and um then it went on and list some other ones i'll have to go back and read it i need to take notes on stuff like that but uh that sounds like a wild story if it's true well there was another <clears throat> part of it like she said in multiple meetings they would sit down in the i guess whoever's leading these meetings always carrying a weapon and would just lay it out on the table like as intimidation so and weird. then she went on and said they discharged it and then picked up the bullet fragment and handed it to i'm like, i'm guessing several people and saying this is your blessing like basically remember it maybe might get shot or whatever i don't know um that's super bizarre if, it's, I'm if like, it really happened. Wow. Yeah. I mean, I, I always want to hear the other side, too, before I make judgments, I guess. Um, but if you're having a lot of people saying this. Yeah, thing, I mean, I guess that's true. Like a number of witnesses does does bring some um, clout with it. But that just also seems like so bizarre, like almost too bizarre to be true, you know, at the same time. I guess you could look at it. It's too bizarre to not be true. Like, how would you make? Yeah. Like, why would you make up something and also like you're, that? You're, she's leaving, right? And she didn't say anything, like. You have to listen to the episode, but it's very intriguing. And there's another. So that one. was on the. That was the what you sent me was from. Yeah, the uh, was explained one. on that. I'll look at it real quick. It was called Mega. Mega something. something. Yeah. Mega Minds or Mega, Mega Minds. Yeah. Well, I thought it was going to be a man at first because there's the. But it's the pastor's face on the middle of it. That's what I realized. Oh. <clears throat> but it's a lady that does the podcast. Oh, okay. I could probably look up the text that you sent me. Me Mega, Mega Maniacs. Maniacs. Yeah. That's what it is. Yeah, it's got some dude on it. Yeah, that's on the on the logo. What'd you say his name was? Rob. Oh, that's supposed to be the pastor yes. of the if you look at his picture. Mm. I mean, come on. It's artistic. I guess. <laughs> I mean, they, are they... I don't know who else it would be. Purposely made them look pretty diabolical looking. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Well, either way. I guess I should have listened to Those are some of the things that they're like, hey, you should talk about this. And, yeah. um, you know, I think a lot of it... Uh, I know we want to keep, like, the discussion open, but uh, some of the suggestions are like, kind of having a theme but not like doing both like if it falls oh, like a theme for the episode. yeah we could start somewhere like if for using that as an example we could start talking like hey you know this is or and then if it flows off to us talking about soccer then that's what happens but yeah uh just so it's just not so randomized yeah they say sometimes it's hard to follow or if they pause it or do something and they're totally lost <laughs> Yeah, I, I guess I I don't know how to I don't know how to t internalize that yet. I guess. Well, like I said, we're still learning. Yeah, like we're not these people that like Joe Rogan and stuff, or anybody like that, where we're like Joe Rogan always has a guest, you know. And I guess that's true. It's always somebody different with yeah. Rogan. So he can he can be like, oh, this week I'm having Elon Musk, like. Okay. So then they just talk. He just talks to Elon Musk like he's About, talking to anybody. Yeah, yeah. It, or he might ask Elon Musk. So that's Musk a different and stuff dynamic. Like that. Yeah, because he probably has like specific things. Like, oh, Elon Musk is coming on. I'm yeah, gonna, he's already has questions. I have like it. these specific things. Like, I want to right. know from him. Yeah. Um, I get that. I could see how that's a different dynamic than what you and I can do on a weekly basis because we only have probably so much that mm -hmm. we can talk about together. So like 
majority of the podcasts I've watched that try to get ideas are either solo podcasts, so they have kind of a script that they're following. Yeah. Now they won't do verbatim, but they have like an outline of what their show is going to be about, or they have multiple people in there and they're covering a topic. Like they'll say, okay, today, did you see in the news? You know, they're, they always have their like little niche. Someone might be about churches or one might be about, you know, um, politics. And so they're talking about what's going on currently or in the past or whatever. Yeah. Where we're trying to like hit all the facets. Hit everything. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I want to be able to, <clears throat> cause I, and I guess that's something that could develop over time. You could like, we could find a niche that we want to stay in. And then I, mean, our, I don't think we would need a niche, but maybe, um, we could be the people that like every week we talk about something different. Maybe. Yeah. Like this week. Well, that's what I thought was really cool about having Chad on. Yeah. Well, that's what I'm saying. Because it was such a different dynamic with him. And he had some specific things that he shared about himself personally Mm -hmm. that I thought was really cool. Um, And for him to get to have a platform to share that story on, I thought also was cool, which is another thing I like about having, uh, having this. Is, yeah. is to give people an opportunity because there there could have been maybe there was some healing that that he well, had just being able to share. I'm gonna say that bit. that could be your niche. Yeah, it doesn't have to be a specialized. Joe Rogan does it more of an entertainment way, like he's bringing on either people that have eccentric views on something or someone like Mike Tyson or yeah. something like that. Well, he's just curious too, right? But you can bring people in and tell their story. Yeah, and it might help them and also probably going to help somebody else like yeah you, you never know like what we was talking about earlier like i have kidney stones i've had i have all these illnesses and all this crazy crap that goes on like you could have someone come on a show and just talk about that their their journey and you know whoever wh- however it goes you know right you might end up talking about that for five minutes and then the rest of the time talking about hobbies or yeah you know whatever is it their interest in life not they, they might just want to get their you know, oh, that's setting their just thing out up. Of, off their chest, and then not want to talk about it anymore. Right? There was um, there was a thumbs up that just came up. Hold on, I gotta stop this window. All right, see, that's what I'm talking about. You guys are riding along with me here. I'm gonna see if I can figure out this uh, setting here. So. Because I had the balloons come up again on that one episode. I think it was with, I think it was with Chad. <sighs> we got to figure out when we're going to just start doing them live. I know. I was thinking about that too. I just don't know. Like, do do I need to have a um a ribbon cutting? Yeah. No, not a, like, a, like a grand <laughs> opening one. Like this is our first live show. I can't find the setting. Um, no, I definitely think it needs to be hyped up for sure. So that people that will want to be a part of it will tune into it. And then also figuring out like, when's the best time? When's the time that's going to get the most people that can participate that want to participate? It's probably going to be later in the day. I would say after dinner time, Mm, like a 7 PM, maybe 8 PM. Um, yeah, I've been thinking about that too. And then but there has to be enough of an audience that shows up for it to be as interactive as you would want a live I mean, if it's, show to be, I guess. If it's a bomb, it's a bomb, but there's only one way you're going to do it. I guess. Can't do like a sign-up genius and be like, oh, all right, everybody. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you volunteered to show up. You better be here. We're taking attendance. Reserve your spot now. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, no, I guess, I guess we could just run the show as if we were just recording it yeah, and then and then it just happens to be live you know, someone if, might if there throw, are interacting i might comments. say something like galileo got his head yeah, cut off and you, you could have somebody like, a little bit uh, that's not right <laughs> yeah uh for those of you maybe uh i don't know your son you went home you, yeah you, you text me and said yeah. your son corrected you yeah. that galileo was not beheaded uh that he would he just served life in prison is that what he yeah. said yeah so that's so, funny but What's funny is it sparked a memory of where I got that information from. So I remember in a in a freshman class, 
uh, Miss Landis, uh, we held a mock trial and Galileo was on trial. Oh. And so there was a jury and then you had the lawyer for Galileo. Like and the defense a, lawyer. Yeah, and then you had the prosecutor and you had a judge and all this other stuff. Well, in our trial, it was like he was getting sentenced to death or he was innocent. And so like the lawyer and stuff had to present the things of why he was innocent. Well, obviously in ours, he didn't, he, he was guilty. And I remember that's where it's always stuck in my head that, that he, he was got, yeah. he got beheaded because of your yeah because your class judge yeah the <laughs> jury found him guilty that I sentenced you to death because after he told me that I'm like then where did I hear I just didn't make it up like I yeah. heard it somewhere you know like when you hear something and you're you're like I know I learned that somewhere where did it come from and then it's just like I remember now that's hilarious because I remember that class was it was really fun to do that too yeah. Yeah, that, that so, sounds cool. Well, I would have got the Jeopardy answer incorrect. <laughs> <laughs> I I just love that your what is he ten? He's eleven. Eleven. Yeah. Your eleven year eleven year old son corrected you. Well, he's too smart for his own good. Yeah. Well, I guess it's cool too that he watches the show. Oh, now he's into like Bigfoot. He's been watching Bigfoot oh, shows on. Oh yeah. And I'm like big. Bigfoot's not real. He's like, how do you know? So now we're at home <laughs> arguing about why Bigfoot's not real. There's probably somebody listening that's like, oh yeah, I'm sure he totally is real. Yeah, Jeff, I'm, I'm your sure. son, listen to your son. Yeah, I'm I'm 100 sure someone's going to hear this. And be like, this oh. is what this is what I say about stuff like that because I've learned that I don't know who the people are in my circle. They might be in my close circle that really truly believe this stuff that I might think is weird or out there or whatever. So to not be mean, all I will say about Bigfoot is I have not been anywhere close to being convinced. Me neither. That he is real. That's what I told That's him. That's what I'll say. That's how I'll That's what I told it. him. He's like, <laughs> well, first it started out with the Yeti. So he's been watching like these HBO specials and stuff like that. And he's like... The, what do you think about the Yeti? This is how it came up. And I was like, what about the Yeti? And he's like, well, you think it's real? I was like, absolutely not. And he's like, why not? I was like, there's just, you know, there's just not enough proof. Like, there's just no record. And he's like, well, what about what happened to the Russians and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, what are you talking about? And he's like, <clears throat> there's this expedition that went up to, I don't know, it was Mount Everest or somewhere. And they all disappeared and they found some of them murdered and stuff like that. And uh, the people that believe in the Yeti think it was the Yeti that caused it. And then, but then there's other sources saying that they were murdered by one of their other comrades or whatever. Yeah. Um, so there's always other theories. Some of them said they were killed by China government and stuff like that. But right. anyways, <clears throat> so that's like, he's like, well, what about that? And I was like, there's a lot of loopholes in there. And then now it's Bigfoot. <laughs> He'll be watching them where, you know, they're like, you smell that? <laughs> yeah, you smell that? Yeah, I smell that too. That's, that's that musk, that musk, that. And <laughs> so I'm just, he, he watches it in his room, but it just cracks me up because he is now convinced there is a Bigfoot. I'm just like, I don't know, man. He's like, they got Bigfoot tracks. And I was like, this can be man-made and then he goes on to even debunk himself because he's 11 it's hilarious he's like <laughs> he well there's a, he's circles. like there was this funny part where this guy was walking around and he's like stop there's big foot tracks and then the other guy turned around and goes those are my footprints <laughs> that's hilarious was he did he not have any shoes on i guess not no oh. and then he talked about this one guy that uh your footprints would look like big foot prints probably i don't know about that these big footprints like I watch the show on they're huge. I mean they're abnormally huge, like grocery bag big. My my shoes are Shaq squares a twenty two, <laughs> man. My feet are not that big. <laughs> abnormally. That was the word that you used. They're Your not feet abnormally, are abnormally big. big. No, they're not. How can you say they're not abnormally big when the average size shoe is probably mine are bigger than average, probably. I'm just saying, just, for my size, it's not abnormal. <laughs> for your size, but you're not normal size. Yeah, but Bigfoot's like supposedly eight to ten foot tall. Mm. How like, big are how big are these footprints that they supposedly found? 
they're huge. They got video. You could look it up online, and they they've taken like castings. Yeah, because there's a uh, I think it's in Washington, like a Bigfoot mu- museum that you can no, go to. Yeah. But he's telling me this other guy, <laughs> and it's just like not to make fun of Bigfoot people, but all these guys that are doing this hunting, they're not really the smartest group all the time. They fit. Are you saying they fit like a similar stereotype? Yeah, is that what you mean? the ones on the shows. You know, it's kind of like the gator hunting guys. Sure, you know, they're going to show the, the moonshine ones. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> so this one guy had a toothache. So he went instead of going to the dentist, he's going to pull his own tooth out. And instead of pulling the the tooth out, the tooth out ache out, he pulled the wrong tooth out. So then he had to go back <laughs> and pull the other tooth back out. So he oh had two goodness. missing teeth. I'm like. Emmett, you see these guys that you're listening to right consider now? your sources right <clears throat> i'm like there's just not enough investment in the there's trail cams and i just feel like if we wanted to find bigfoot he would have been found by now yeah I, well i don't understand the uh i guess i don't understand the infatuation with it i mean it would be kind of cool to find out like there is a bigfoot well maybe that's it maybe they maybe the people that are convinced he's real want to be the person that finds him well yeah i mean you know like maybe that's the maybe the, it, maybe it's like a treasure hunting type uh, yeah like oak island they got this yeah. thing on oak island they got tons of shows out there about all these people are just trying to find weird treasures like that yeah i mean even if like for me if if there were like if something came out and there was indisputable right. evidence like they shot Bigfoot him and killed bigfoot yeah. and they found and there's like an actual carcass right or whatever i don't know what it would take to convince me but if there was something and then i became fully convinced i don't know that i would be all that i'd just be like oh that's i mean cool. i think my day would continue i'm like well <laughs> that's I what guess. i mean like I, oh that's cool guess that's I'll crazy have to go tell my 11 year old he's right <laughs> yeah I'm like man that's crazy big feels actually bigfoot's actually right. real uh but it wouldn't be like it wouldn't be some um jaw-dropping discovery i guess i don't know one crazy theory that we heard about bigfoot is that some people believe it's the mark of cain mm. so i don't like, know that i've ever heard that one yeah it's not really biblically like silent. it's some type of like cursed human race yeah or something? so like how when cain murdered abel humanoid uh god cursed him and his like offspring and i guess but his his verbatim, off- his offspring wouldn't be alive because of the flood. Like his lineage would have been wiped out in the flood. Yeah, I guess. And only Seth's, because all the lineage was wiped out yeah. in the flood. Only Seth's was the one that from Noah. Noah was a part of Seth's lineage. But what about like Goliath? Like he came from, uh, they said, the lineage of the giants before pre flood. That would have been impossible. I'm. I, I think that's what the Bible says, though. Like, no. Uh, what what is he called? A knocking or whatever it's called. The um, because there's there's giants na- before the flood. Na- Nef- Nephilim. 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 So the See? the We're giants names. and before the flood, because there was a uh, that king or king or so they something. Let's see, I need a computer so we can look it up. <laughs> Is this, is this Book of Enoch stuff? No, I don't think so. Book of Enoch more goes along with like the angels, like the fallen angels. But isn't that part of what the Nephilim might be? Isn't that the offspring? The idea is that the Nephilim were fa- the fallen angels. No, the Nephilim. Well, the Nephilims are off are the post flood humanoids that bred with the angels. So, but the Nephilim were pre-flood, no, right? Doesn't, Goliath was post-flood. Does, no, yeah, I know that. I'm saying Goliath is thought to be a part of. Let me bring this up. I'm on my phone. I could probably bring it up. He's part of an. I believe it starts with an A. My understanding of this ideology. One of those things that yeah, I don't know book. much about and I'm not convinced of is that family of Adam, the wicked and just now it came to pass when men began to multiply in the face of the earth and the daughters were born to them that the sons of God saw the daughters of men. 
This is Genesis six. This is before yeah. the flood. Right. That those sons of God. There's all kinds of theories and ideologies about so who this, those sons of God. So in this were. theory, they're the angels, the fallen angels, the ones that follow Lucifer. Right. I've heard that before. I, th right. I think. Um, and that these were giants. Yeah, right? they, they they are the. the there were because then yeah verse four so that's verse two mm -hmm. so then verse four is there were giants on the earth in those days and also afterward when the sons of god there it is again mm -hmm. came into the daughters of men and they bore children to them so their children are the the giants and so king or was a those were the mighty men of who were of old yeah, men of renown. was a pre-flood uh supposedly giant um and people tie him into being basically the father of not the father but kind of like the grandfather what however many in the tree of goliath um or is there but they they wouldn't have survived the flood that's the that's the part that where do they come where do they settle that well, that's where it comes in like some of the missing doctrines like the dead sea scroll stuff that we people have hold of that we're not allowed to read i don't think it's that we're not allowed to read well apparent apparently this is another conspiracy theory right i'm full of them uh <laughs> that the vatican obviously has huge powers through the century the catholics right mm -hmm. keep hitting that rug um let's look that up and they might hold, you know, where the ark is and where like they might have information. The spear, that... well, they, they they say they have the spear of destiny, you know, the spear that uh stabbed Jesus. Um, you know, all this stuff. You know, they got the shroud. Present share screen. I get better at this and be more fluid in it. So if you look up why all right, so first the Dead Sea Scrolls are a set of ancient Jewish manuscripts from the Second mm -hmm. uh, Temple period. They were discovered over a period of 10 years between 1946 and 56, uh, dating from the 3rd century BCE to the 1st century. The Dead Sea Scrolls include the oldest surviving manuscripts of entire books later included in the biblical canons, along with extra biblical and... Well, these are some great words. Yeah. Deuteral, deuterocanical manuscripts from the late Second Temple Judaism. At the same time, they cast new light on the emergence of Christianity and the rabbinic Judaism. There's 15,000 scroll, but they're at, it says almost all are at the shrine of the book at the Israel Museum located in Jerusalem. Yeah, they got this big wall. That's all a picture of it. And it's encased inside the wall like it's all scrolled out. It's pretty cool I looking. Gotcha. Um, so the, the book of Enoch. So is, is that is the book of Enoch said to have been a part of those those that discovery? You have to look it up. I don't remember. But what I read about. And this is just Wikipedia, by yeah. the way. So What I read about the book of Enoch is that it was. part of the canon but since it describes the angels doing blasphemy blasphemic i don't know what the correct word would be uh sinful things and brought ill light to it that the the uh, catholic and the jewish people agreed to basically get rid of it so uh But supposedly you can buy it on Amazon. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. I don't know. I I didn't read that. I don't know if it's like written like King James version or if it's. Just so I looked like... a little bit of it up, and there was these words that I didn't even know existed, like uh, the apocrypha, and which is like this grouping of texts that weren't canonized because, but th but they're considered um, because to be canonized 
there was a process for them to say, okay, yes, this was spirit, uh, like Holy Spirit. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Holy Spirit directed. Uh, this so this is the word of God, and that's why they were canonized like that. I don't know the whole process. I haven't looked into See, the, how that was determined. And, why that was that way? And this, yeah, the, but the uh, skeptic in me, I don't believe that because. You don't believe that what we have canonized is the word of God? No, I believe that is the word of God, but I believe that they left certain that things That there may out be other things that were the for word of God. For sake of power and control. Um, <clears throat> because it's just human nature. Yeah. I mean, you, you, it's like people bashing on the Mormon religion because they have the Book of Mormon. Now, if you just take the Book of Mormon on itself, because I've read it, you know, I belonged to the church at one time, and if you read it, it reads biblically. Like there's nothing in it that is like super crazy. Um, it basically just breaks down the history of uh, what happened in America, like how kind of like Christianity got started here and there's two tribes and all this other stuff. Um, what gets crazy about the Book of Mormon or the church is that they have this other part called the Doctrine and Covenant. Mm -hmm. And that was written strictly by Joseph Smith, which is not necessary, is not tied into the Book of Mormon. Yeah. Um, but the Book of Mormon talks about Jesus and talks about how he's coming back and talking about all this stuff and how you should be baptized and all that other stuff. Um, the later on stuff about as stuff is like that I kind of disagree with with how like Mormons hold the keys to baptism and hold the keys to the Arianic keys and all these other things that are, you know, was bestowed on them and they only have the rights to do this. I don't believe. And that's not in the book of Mormon. I gotcha. That so, came later. The book of Mormon were tablets that he translated kind of like what you're saying and canonized basically. Um, and then he added on his own prophecies or his talking to God, like, they have a thing called Word of Wisdom, which lists out things that you should basically like treat your body like a temple, avoid caffeine, avoid tobacco, and all this other stuff, and it explains where those came from. Um, so it's not like all of it's evil, but then some of it's like, you know, like at one time they did have plural marriages, but it kind of went away. But uh, it's just stuff like that. Yeah. So that's what I think about when I think about when someone says, well, these spirit led guys, well, it's not like the King James people. Like, were they really doing the, the benefit well, all the, of the world? And then they're like, well, they just read, translated. Well, if you read, if you read the what people say about the book of Enoch, is that they're saying the people that canonized it basically said, we're not going to put this in there because it makes the angels look bad and we want to depict them as being holy and great yeah but we know not all the angels were right but back then you know but not because of the not because of something like the book of enoch though i mean but why isn't the because, book of enoch included? because the, the scripture that we have in our current holy bible talks about you know we know that satan was mm -hmm. an angel and we know that there were angels that went with him you mm -hmm. know um so i don't know i don't know why they would why they would be upset with uh angels being depicted in a way when there were angels that that were fallen that that decided they were going to go with lucifer what i mean they made the decision that we didn't get to make mm. that's the problem like we don't get to I don't know because I wasn't there when they decided to, you know, take it out. Um, yeah, I just need to read more on the um, the actual history of it. Yeah, well, so do I. Because uh, and I that's what that's like. I learned about I get down rabbit holes all the time. The apocrypha is and and that it called it basically these um, the apocrypha are like these. Uh, uh, let me look that up real quick. I'm not going to explain it exactly right. Apocrypha. So 
see. Biblical or related writings not forming part of the accepted canon of Scripture, while some might be of doubtful authorship or authenticity. So that's, uh, or at least in Christianity, the word which were read privately rather than in public context of church services, they were edifying Christian works that are that were not considered. So th that would be like uh, any pastor that writes a book. You could you, you could think of that as edifying material, but not necessarily scripture. Like you wouldn't take a pastor's book and say, "Okay, this is this is now scripture." Correct. So that's Basically. what they're saying. So that I guess that was part of the issue with some of these things that were a part of what they call the apocrypha, where um, there was doubt in who actually authored them and the authenticity of of when and how they were. Yeah, authored. I mean, we just have to do more research on it. Yeah. But there's could be a, I mean, Enoch is. I keep trying to scroll, but I'm not. I'm right. You know, he's he had to be a good guy. I mean, he's one of the only ones that never died. Yeah, Enoch was. Yeah. Um, so you would think he would <laughs> write something, and it, it, it coincides with like the, well, the, the theories but, behind the the fallen angels coincide where. It, his book would kind of fall in after Genesis. Well, that's the thing is, is nothing that we have though was written until Moses' time. Well, yeah. So it would have had to survive the flood somehow. And then it would have had to been passed down. I mean, cause a lot of that early stuff was, was passed down orally, you know, from generation to generation. So that's the other thing is, was that oral tradition for a long time and then someone finally put it in writing so who was the author of it then who actually did put it in writing because because that was some of what i remember reading was the date of when the book of enoch was actually written was what was disputed it was a major thing that was disputed because it was like what was it written before jesus or was it written after jesus right. and if it was written after jesus then what is that how does that um like that's that's fairly recent, you know, in terms of the time of from creation. Um, so that's what I've read on it so far that I can remember. Because uh, what I told Chad about it, because he wants to come back and talk about it too, um, was uh, our friend Chris. He said, "If you read the Book of Enoch, I'll, I'll come to church. I'll come to your visit your church." So I was like, "All right, fine, I'll read it. Like I don't care." Well, I'm not more interested in reading it. Well, I, I want to read it, but I'm more inter like kind of like you. I haven't done a whole lot of research. I've just hit the nail on the head right now. And right. Like, there's a whole well, if know, it's something of it to, if it's something that's it a stumbling point for Christians, then I need to have some level of understanding. Well, you do. It, I just so that I can talk about it. Well, I mean, I think all Christians should absolutely. Um, if if it's a stumbling block for your your brother in Christ. You should be able to have a level of understanding that you can talk to them about it. So there's that part of it that I think about because there's some things that I just don't want to concern myself with because I'm like, it doesn't fit into like what I'm what I'm called to like hold up here. <laughs> right? There's only I, I feel mm -hmm. like there's only so much information that my brain can withstand. And I don't want to fill it with things that aren't that important. To me, it hasn't become that important. Like stuff with like Bigfoot and things like that. Like it's just not important to me. But but also I understand that people are curious about things. And if it does become something that's interesting to them, then they'll want to seek out the information. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's the way I should say it is it just hasn't it hasn't intrigued me enough. It hasn't brought enough curiosity in me to want to go find it out. Yeah. So like the like Bigfoot, all those like aliens, all that stuff. I'm not intrigued enough to where I'm deep diving stuff, but yeah. I do want enough understanding to where like I can have a conversation with someone. Sure. Um, because I'm curious, curious, I'm curious of why someone is thinking this. Yeah. That's what drives me to look up things or, 
you know, I'll see it on social media or something like that. I'm like, okay, why does this, this person feel that way? Or, uh, why, like when the book of Enoch came up, it, it was a thing that I, someone did a, like a little short on it. And I'm like, okay, never heard of it besides the Bible, his name. So then I start looking into it. Yeah. But then, you know, it's not super duper important. So I haven't dug so much into it. I haven't ordered the book on Amazon. I haven't read it or anything like that. But uh, yeah, it's one of those curious. I can't remember where I first heard about it. But you were one of the first people that ever brought it up to me. I remember you yeah. messaging me like, hey, have you ever heard of the book of Enoch? And I had heard of it, but I was like, I haven't really looked into it. I don't know much about it. And I still haven't. <laughs> I've done a little bit of research. Well, same thing but... with like uh, the gospel of uh, Judas. Oh, that's, yeah. That's, uh... You said something to me about that too. And I was like, okay, whatever, bro. Don't, don't be rolling your eyes, man. <laughs> Oh, I forgot. Speaking they're all just uh, they're, they're just my curiosity, you know. Like, yeah, maybe it is it. full of crap. I don't know, but it's worth the look at, dude. Uh, you might be able to hear this. So, this just made me think of it when you said, "Don't roll your eyes at me." I did these sound bites. I put them in my roadcaster. You might. I think I got them on the speaker here. So, no kind of sand is you're wrong. I don't know. It's coming through the. Did and you hear it? You're wrong. It, yeah. Here, put these right up here. I could hear it. Oh, now I'm gonna mess up my mic. <laughs> Through our tangled web of. All right, ready. No kind of sand is your wrong. <laughs> Wait, there's one more. Bobby, Boucher. this is like this is like a really long, obnoxious one too. So like, if you're really obnoxiously wrong, then you get this one. You're wrong. You're so wrong. Wrong, 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 wrong. You're wrong. You're wrong. You're wrong. <laughs> <That's so boring. laughs> They can hear it. They oh. can hear it. The, head <clears throat> the Bobby Boucher, or how yeah. to say his name is the right one. That was hilarious. Uh, no, Mr. Curtis Stanley, you're <laughs> wrong. I just can't imagine. The gospel of Judas just sounds like an oxymoron. It might be, but I'm wondering, like, where to come from? What's the purpose? Yeah. Like, reading it, does it... Does it hold up the story of Jesus? Because if it does, does that make it a bad thing? Now you you can say it's not maybe not part of the Holy Bible, but it's can be like a you know a pastor's book. Well, but if it if it contra if it's trying to well that's on because you kind of presented it as if it was a contradiction to the Gospels no, that we it, have it, that Judas well, didn't actually hang himself and that you know there was these other things that it didn't say that did he actually hang himself. I was curious on curious on that point. Oh, myself. we made it seem like that that was part of. So the book is is saying that Judas, like all the all the the disciples, spoke to Judas or spoke to Christ personally, intimately. Like they sure. all had a relationship. Yeah, and that's what some of this stuff talks about. Like in the gospels is that what jesus said to them or you know or someone else that they witnessed or someone that told them about it it's basically along the same line like what jesus spoke to judas about hmm. not no i haven't read it i haven't done a whole lot of research about it it's one of those enoch things where it's like on my list of like oh, let's see what the how, where this goes i wonder if it's a part of the apocrypha like the book of enoch is um is it called the book of judas or yeah is it called the gospel, gospel of judas? Of judas? yeah uh i watched a long youtube on it and it said you know something about uh second century gnostic you know the gospel kind of, of judas is a non canonical canonical <laughs> gnostic gospel the content consists of conversations between jesus and judas Scariot, given that it includes late second century theology, it is widely thought to have been composed in the second century prior to 180 AD. I wonder, is that the deadline of being canonized? I don't know. I that's another thing I want to look into is I want to I think Answers in Genesis has a thing about the history of the Bible and how it came together. And 
and they so they're presenting it from the from the perspective of why why it can be trusted um so i, I want and they're very thorough in all of the stuff that they present so i want to i want to do a study on that um it says the only copy of it known to exist is coptic language text that has been carbon dated to 280 ad i don't believe in carbon dating hey me either <laughs> <laughs> now you need can we get you, some balloons to, yeah. how do we get balloons to go up Man, <laughs> see right. they don't do it when you wanted to do it um again it's not that i don't believe in it i'm not convinced that it's accurate correct i'll say it that way I'm more I, convinced of its inaccuracy. Yeah. Can you do it? Can you find the carbon, you know, in the molecules yeah. of what you're testing? Yes. Do I think you should be basing like history off of it? Absolutely. Yeah. Not. No, I don't either. And, and Chad and I touched a little bit on this too, I think. And I've actually done some like deep dive research on this. Well, thing. and I, I've, I've read, um, so a lot of what I read is from answers in Genesis because they have such a, they're very thorough in the way that they research and the way that they present the information. Sometimes it's so like nerdy that I can't even, mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, this is too much. Like I need right. it broken down a little bit more in layman terms for me, but they're all, most of them are doctorate level mm -hmm. people. And so like I've read, do, you know, they have a doctorate level geologist. He actually just did some experiments on the grand Canyon he, with the bins. Yeah. So did you read his stuff. A, I didn't read it, but there's a show on, there was on Amazon Prime called uh, Noah's Ark, mm -hmm. and it's not just about the ark, but it's called. There's like four episodes of it, and that guy is on it, and he talks about the bins and yeah. basically the sediment and how like how unrealistic it it would not take millions right. of years. You can't have bended sed yeah. sediment that goes over right. a long period of time. Right. Like a sediment like that would have to be fast. fast. Yeah, right. Heat and speed. Is so basically you would like it, that show? Yeah that's basically what they're talking about like how the great flood actually could happen because everybody wants to be like oh yeah the whole you know well right well he explains it and then they have other scientists that um i don't know if they're christian or not it doesn't tell that they are but they are like experts in their field and they're saying like well this is what we know now these are theories which are thoughts that are not proven yet right so they're saying like this is how it acts in their experience experiments now if you take it and try to make it over millions of years it does not work right so they're saying they don't see how scientists can theorize that the it took 10 million years for the grand canyon to right. when their experiment shows it can happen in less than like five seconds almost right. yeah well and that's the thing is is the secular science that we have I think I think science that we have right now are all and there's there's things that um there's assumptions that that mm -hmm. a Christian like me is against science which is like can't even be so far from the truth. Right. I think that the science that we have that we know the things that we discover when it's good when it's actual science when it's actual observable repeatable like real science, not just made up models, mm -hmm. you know, and things that that you can't prove the accuracy of or that are based off of guesses and theories. You know, yeah. Theories are the biggest thing. Like theory right. of evolution, theory of even like space travel and all that stuff. Like yeah. it's just so uh, but I think that that a lot of the science that we know, the observable science that we see that happens right before our eyes are all just God's way of revealing just a small fraction of his magnificence to us mm -hmm. um his intelligence to us his creativity his imagination i mean science is just really cool and that, that's what i think science is for well, us. what's funny is what i'm learning is that when we learn like you said the true part of how things work when it becomes like science fact versus science theory mm. is that it explains god it, just makes it way more prevalent. Right. I watched a show about explaining the the human body and how there's nothing else like it. Nothing. Right. Like, yeah, we have other mammals, and other, but there's nothing like the human body. Yeah. And even in other organisms, 
it breaks down how DNA is created and it, and it talks about how a computer is created. So there's four similarities. And I don't remember all four of them that are created the same. So, you know, computer basics is zero ones. And that's what creates a computer program or identity. Right. Well, on a DNA, DNA strand, there's four letters and they are depending on how it links up is the four strands. And it goes on about how software and all this other stuff and how the human body, it shows just like we create computers, someone had to create a human body yeah, because it is so designed exactly like we create technology now. Right. Yeah, that's why I've never, even before, even when I was kind of like in an agnostic stage of my life yeah. where I wasn't really sure about God, evolution just still seemed ludicrous to me. I'm like, no, like the, the explanation. And so then I started reading and looking into it more. And I'm like, okay, I'm just going to get back to the basics. Like I'm in ninth mm -hmm. grade again, <laughs> like in, in 10th grade biology or whatever, whatever grade we took biology and start looking into these, these, uh, just the basics of evolution. And it was like, no, like that does not, that doesn't make right. any sense. Like what you're presenting does not prove what you're saying it proves. And, uh, and so all of that already looked weird to me. I remember, I remember going through the, this uh, evolution site. I don't even know if it was for kids or what, but it had um, the the skeletal structure, because because that's what a lot of people will say, right? If you say something about uh, evolution, they'll be like, "Well, what about the fossil record?" Oh, I can go. That's on always like someone they bring up, right? I can debunk and I'm like, dinosaurs in a in a heartbeat. Well, it's like the fossil record. What is, that doesn't prove that a hummingbird Any is related bird. to a whale. Because that, that's what it was showing. It was showing right. like this hummingbird's, you know, skeletal structure and a whale skeletal structure. And it was like, they probably were related. And I'm like, how do you make that connection? Like Just a, because a they chicken's look... related to a T-Rex. Right. You because know, they have like that. hollow bones. Yeah. So it's, it's like, just because there were things that were similarly designed, especially mm -hmm. for like a bird or a hummingbird, a hummingbird's design is designed for speed right and being able to well a whale's design is designed to go through water efficiently a hummingbird's design is, is designed to go through the air efficiently oh it's plausible that they would look similar to each other because they're they were designed for to travel in similar ways even though in different environments mm -hmm. so it was just like that was like a huge thing for me that hummingbird whale thing i'll never forget and be like this is the most this is silly. But then the question might would be like, okay, whales are mammals. So when did a, a whale decide not to be a mammal anymore? And now it's going to lay eggs. Yeah. Like that's the stuff that baffles me and they can never explain it. Well, and but the only way that they can explain Over it. Over millions of years. Exactly. Is, the, oh. is that's where the millions of years things came from is because when, when Darwin started to see these similarities in like Darwin's finches, right? Those yeah. are the famous things that, that he sketched and, um and was like the the first thing of him looking at different species and um and so as as they started to go through and they started to find these similarities between animals and their bone structures and all these things well what they couldn't figure out was okay when we don't see these changes be happen before us like we don't observe one thing becoming a different thing and we've never we still have never have that and we still have never figured out that link that's that's literally because why it's called the missing link right so there's a but that's the, but the, right. the final thought is that's where millions of years came from is but even then, then they don't have a if you look at all the species that they say came from something else like it evolved from this to that there's a you, you could take a line there's no species in between there that says right. okay the whale went from this to this to this to this to this to this to a hummingbird yeah. they have no records of that yeah Right. And, and nor do they have, so they have one. So I'm pretty sure Lucy is the only set of bones of what they believe are humanoid bones. Yeah. That created the artist rendering of an ape to man. So that famous. Yeah. I know bring it up. About, yeah. So everybody knows what I'm talking about. Uh, but what I found crazy is that. Do you know there's never been a complete uh, uh, dinosaur 
Okay, so this is a very, uh, this is the first one that came up. So I just want to bring it up quickly because I don't want to spend a lot of time trying to find it. But all right, so everyone knows this kind of similar where it shows the ape and then eventually the fully erect humanoid humanoid, human being. So the, um, that's, that's an artist rendering. And, and all there is is Lucy and us. That's all there. And then an artist just filled in the blanks all the way up to us. And it's like, wait a minute. That's not how I was taught in school. Like, I didn't know that that was just an artist rendering of, of how that came right. to be. And then you look at the actual bone, the actual skeleton that they actually have. A, well, I'll bring that up too. Lucy. Um, what should I put in? Lucy. Oh yeah, this is it. This is Lucy right here, folks. If you are evolution people and you think I'm crazy. Tell us in the comments. Yeah. <laughs> so I know you can't see it, but it's, it's, it's very fragmented. Right. Like they have like one hip bone. The other one's missing. They have one femur. The other one's missing. They have some of the, the torso and the arms um, and very little of the skull. So it's like, wait a minute. This image here is what they connect us to apes and say that we, we likely evolved from apes. Now they have current monkeys, right? But it's still, it's like, okay, so there's a pretty good chance that this Lucy was not a humanoid, that it was just another species of ape <laughs> that maybe be, ex that might maybe be extinct, extinct now. Well, so that's, that's just wild stuff to me that people talking about bones think that they've never found a complete settled. set of dinosaur bones. Never. Oh, yeah. I didn't know that. Ever. They found teeth. They might find a, a fragment of a so they've just uh, pieced a leg bone. Other things together. Yeah, we don't really know what a T Rex looks like. We have mm, no idea I didn't even know that. what a T Rex. If you look it up, I think I knew that there's a lot of artist renderings of oh. dinosaur animals, and when you see anytime you see like a CGI thing of like what we think a brontosaurus looked like, or right, like those are all artists just so. Things that have come uh, up, like, oh, well, it must have been a lizard like structure. So, so, because it must have been a lizard, then its skin probably looked like this. And now it's not a lizard. Now they think uh, Tyrannosaurus Rex had oh, it was like feathers. some kind of bird. Yeah, feathers. I've seen that stuff too. Uh, so, you, you get the I, when I say Velociraptor, what do you think of uh, Jurassic Park and a dinosaur looking at you in the face? Yeah. Well, now they think Velociraptors might have only been the size of a, a chicken. Right. Yeah. Or three feet tall. Yeah. Like, so how do you believe these people that are going in such extremes? Not only that, they believe they had wings. Yeah. To, I haven't to heard this. that either before. But that's, uh, but I believe that, that, that what you're saying is true. I don't even know if I believe in dinosaurs anymore. Well, here's the thing about dinosaurs. Cause people ask me, like, well, what do you think about dinosaurs? Well, were dinosaurs real? And they think that they're trying to get you in a trap of like, well, what if I say denying no? things, right? Well, here's my thing is I go back to different kinds of animals. And because that's the other thing too is, well, how could millions of species have been on the ark? No, there wasn't millions of species on ark. If you, there's only about um, a few thousand, maybe 10,000, I can't remember the yeah. exact number um, of actual kinds of animals. I think there's even less than that. And, uh, because we went to the ark and I remember, and they do have dinosaurs on the ark. So, or, well, they have supposedly like yeah, dinosaurs. Well, dinosaurs. they have, they have their, what they took artist. They even explained that too. Yeah. Like we took artistic, freedom. uh, freedom. Um, and, and we are giving an alternate perspective of what these different species might've looked like these different kinds. So at the ark, when you walk around they have posters on the, the wall of like okay so this is kinds. species so people get this that, that species i'm looking for kinds here google google's not going to want to tell me it like canines is a kind that's a kind yeah. so not every single dog was on the ark right. there was only one well they canine, break it down like that male and female or two canines they'll male break it down on if you ever go to the ark which i would encourage anybody to go to especially if you have kids yeah believer and non-believer because it explains a lot 
of both worlds. And you have to you have to read the exhibits. Yeah. Like I Candace gets Candace gets frustrated. Well, she doesn't. She gets it, but she goes and just kind of Have you been to the art? Yeah. Finally went to the art yeah. uh, a couple years ago. Candace and I did. But she knows because we went to the creation museum. Because I, I it's I, not as much reading as a creation creation museum is very there was still wordy. a lot. But yeah. yes, there's a lot of the creation museum. But I read every single plaque. I spent oh, three I and a half hours. Cordy likes to tell the story about when we went to zoo with you, and you would stop at every plaque and yeah, read about them because there are plaques there. I want to read them. <laughs> How else am I supposed to know? She likes to talk about the bug house. She's like, it took us like two hours to get through the bug house. Oh, that's an <laughs> exaggeration. Uh, but yeah, so okay. Okay, yeah. So less than ten thousand, about six thousand, right? Uh, almost seven thousand kinds Which is of animals. Not that many? No, that's not that many at all. Like, there's probably cow farms that oh, easily are bigger than that. Easily here in Warren County, even you know, like <laughs> so. Um, so. And then the other thing about dinosaurs too is even if they did, even if they were giant lizards, which that's all that dinosaur, the word dinosaur. That's the other thing too. It's not a lizard anymore, apparently. Well, but that's, that's the word what dinosaur means, right? It means uh, giant lizard or um, or a uh, scary lizard or something like that. I can't well, remember. Well, Tyrannosaurus rex like. meant like thunder lizard. Yeah. But, uh, I don't know. Um, Dino excerpts can correct us. <laughs> but but there was, it's just a Latin word, I think, of Latin yeah. origin that was dubbed for these animal bones that they started to find, right? And so to think that dinosaur so then dinosaurs then became this almost like this species this whole species of animals different kinds of animals that then only were a part of this certain time period you know prehistoric jurassic all of, all of these different time periods that they have these different animals in and that just doesn't it just doesn't add up and they got extinct all at different times from different right again and the only way to explain that Huge again is things. through millions of years. The only way that can make sense is if there's millions of years. Oh, yeah. So dinosaurs, the dinosaurs that we're thinking of, like the Jurassic, it was like a hundred million years they were around. Yeah. That's just that just sounds ridiculous. To me. Well, and it's funny how like one day I was re I was uh, listening to how doesn't it show if there's a hundred million years, how is there no evolution shown in there? Right. Well, that's the I mean, you can't ever they can't ever show actual evolution. Now, what they do show, and this is part of their, what they use to, part of the guess that they have, is we do see and witness adaptation. Adaptation. Well, that's different. Right. That's not one kind of animal becoming a completely different kind right. of animal. So at the Creation Museum, they use the cave fish because the cave fish is used to support evolution. And what the what I think the Creation Museum does really, really well is again, they're using science, which is what I loved. I, I just loved it so much. That's why I wanted to spend so much time there because I'm like, wait a minute, they're giving real scientific explanations for this. I never knew these explanations even existed right. that you could actually use science to prove the Bible. Like that was blowing my mind. And that's why I just was kept soaking it all up. Mm -hmm. Um so there you go. I had an interest and curiosity in it, and then I was able to soak yeah. it all up, and and uh, I get very passionate about it. So Me too. I guess if uh, that's uh, I'm more passionate about origins of creation than I am Bigfoot right now. So there you go. That's why well, I'm so not. That's what I. <laughs> that's what I'm not that's what I, into Bigfoot stuff. The rabbit holes I go down to is like stuff about the Bible and yeah. like theories on the Bible, and then I I get a lot of because you know you're for you or whatever they call it depending on your algorithm that you look at the most oh yeah they just want to feed whatever you're yeah. gonna watch so if you look at mine it's like uh this is why the bible's true and then it'll be one that's like this is why you shouldn't follow the bible <laughs> i even have one where it's like this is why satan was the good guy because i want to know why people think yeah why, satan, so why would they actually think yeah that? and I, I watched this thing that was so disturbing they had a group of people probably in their 20s and 30s it was probably eight people and had chairs for all the people and there was this lady and she started asking questions and then they said who uh thinks uh god was the good guy and only one person sat down oh wow. i wonder if they set the audience up on purpose though well maybe but then but but it, it spawns my curiosity right. like, why do you not think god's good 
So then they started asking these other people, well, why do you think? And they're like, well, maybe Satan was misjudged and, you know, he just wanted the best for us and, you know, all this other stuff. I'm like, you guys have no idea what you're talking about. Yeah. Like, it's just so misguided. One, probably because none of them ever, you know, uh, and this is an assumption, read the Bible. Or, uh, I mean, Courtney, we were even talking about last night, probably didn't have a foundation like their parent being involved in church. Right. And that is such a huge part of your generation and generational curses. And I was explaining to the kids, like, you know, Satan does not, because we was talking about Easter, and we could talk about this probably for another two hours. We should do an Easter topic, but I was telling them, like, you know, I, I kind of it kind of hurt my feelings, and this is like a new feeling I had because I, I'm glad that people want to bring their kids joy, and this is just my opinion. I'm not judging or saying anything bad about anybody else, but when a kid wakes up and it's excited to see an Easter basket, my thing is like. I'm excited because my savior died and rose. Right. But three days prior, he would just went through one of the most excruciating tortures a human being could ever go through Right. for us. Yeah. Not for glory. Like who would ever put themselves through that for like, that just solidifies it. Like no human would say, yeah, I want to go through all this and then keep because my name will go through the centuries. It's just not going to happen, right? Yeah. It's just impossible. <clears throat> so I'm like telling the kids, like, you know, I'm I'm glad you're happy that you got Easter back. But let's not forget that, yeah. you know, uh, why this day is important. And my son said, well, um, why is Easter, like, bad? And I was like, Easter is not bad. But what's happening is the world is replacing Easter slowly to kind of not say oh we're getting rid of jesus but slowly kind of making him less Important. pronounced like it's yeah. quietly getting rid of him and he's like well yeah. what do you mean i was like well jesus satan doesn't work on our timeline satan works through generations yeah. so if like if my parents weren't strong in church then i wouldn't be strong in church and then you would be a little less strong and a little less strong a little less. so easter is the same thing so if you can take little bites at a time over generations he will win over the next generation for a millennia. Yeah. So he might miss well, that's what happened. You know, three or four generations, but then he gets to generations all past that. Yeah. And I'm like, that's what I see. And I felt it so much this year that slowly Easter is making Christ quiet. Yeah. Like his sacrifice is becoming so quiet. And what Biden did even solidified that even more. Yeah, that was pretty obvious. And I know Easter falls on a different day and this because that's another perspective I read, which I can understand that. Like, it's not always yeah, going to fall they, on the, But he did it. They knew. Purposely. They knew. And then, I don't know if you read more into it, that he had an egg hunt or an egg roll, and they would not allow any religious drawings, scripture writings, or anything that was religious tied. They wouldn't let the kids put that on the eggs. It had to be something non-religious, or they yeah. weren't allowed decorating it. Well, egg. which is... Which is uh... For one, yes, I totally think that what Biden's administration did and what he signed off on was a hundred percent calculated. Oh, absolutely, on purpose to absolutely be on the same because they've supposedly this has been a day that's been known for I don't know. Yeah, it's in been the, around in for like community three years. for a long yeah, time. Yeah, I think even longer than that. It I heard like I, I, like I, I didn't hear that. Years. It's been around. Um, so they had plenty of like opportunities. They had plenty right. of opportunities to do this before when it wasn't on Easter. Um, so to, to make this proclamation, it's in an election year. It's, it was, it was completely on purpose to be on the same day as, you know, what we would consider resurrection Sunday. And so because of the world, the way that the world views Easter now, I don't even, I don't even use the word Easter anymore for the day. I call it resurrection Sunday. Mm -hmm. And, um, it's not, it's not for legalistic purposes because I think there's something against the word Easter, but it's, but like you said, the world has started to. Um, almost steal the word, right? You know, and so just for points of confuse to not confuse my kids, we say Resurrection Sunday, and all those things you pointed out, I would agree with, and that's exactly. I was just just listening to this today. Um, I was catching up in the one year Bible journey that um my pastor did on his YouTube page, mm -hmm. 
uh, Anthony Wade Ministries. I'll give the give the plug. It's one year Bible journey. Just jump in. It's great. He reads through the Bible on on YouTube. You can listen to it, read along with him. He scrolls down through it, whichever way you want to do it. It's awesome. I would use it as a resource. But um, I was catching up, and the people when Joshua died, and we get into Judges, it literally starts Judges out with saying that people. there was a whole generation that didn't know about God, God anymore yeah. they and quit, about what He did. They quit telling. Because, you know, Jesus' commandment is like, you know, he had these festivals that the Jewish were supposed to follow to remember them bringing come, Passover. Right. All this was to remember where they came from yeah. and to remember God. And yeah. then they stopped celebrating. Yeah. So this whole generation was right. lost. And, you know, when you when you look at gods of um, Baal and, you know, even I talked a little bit about this with Chad, I think, or but he sent me things about the Sumerian god. Um, I don't remember... I think it's similar to the name of Baal, but um, but the Bible refers to Baal and these other gods. And what I believe is that these were actual powerful beings mm -hmm. that were demons, and because demons, th there's oh, a spiritual yeah. warfare, and demons have have a power here, mm -hmm. and Satan has a power here. He's Jesus. Uh, sometimes I get a little like nervous to say something that I can't remember fully, but. I'm pretty sure that it was Jesus that refers to him as the God of this world, lowercase God of this world. So he has, um, not, and that was also before he went to the cross, though. So there was an authority that Satan had before Jesus went to the cross that Jesus took back. Just lay that foundation out for any Christians listening. That that's I understand that. Um, but so, but at that time, th during the time of the Old Testament time, there would have been these powerful beings that I think were really that's they were worshiping true powerful beings um that were demons that 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 baal was an actual demon i become more convinced of this recently that this that this is how i see those gods that are mentioned in the old testament and any god mm -hmm. that's mentioned in any human history at all that it's a demon spirit well these demons have names i've even done a little bit of research on some of the names like mm. the most besides satan the most popular people that can refer to it because it's the most popular story is the the demon legion right yeah yeah uh, that's so, what i was gonna say because because yeah. jesus even asked like right. who are you and he said are we are legion <laughs> yeah. because we were many um so that that was a demon yeah and there's other demons obviously that jesus cast out that we don't know their names but we know that he cast them out because he talks about it well and the word says that his name is above all other names right too so that's another nuance i mean that you know it says there are things in Ephesians where it talks about, you know, principalities and mm -hmm. power and might and dominions and, but the, but it also mentions names, and so yeah, demons would be a part of that. They have names, and Jesus is above those names now. Um, uh, I don't remember where I was going with that, but just to affirm what you were saying about the Easter, lost generations, that's what Easter, it was. Yeah, and then Easter bunnies becoming right, um, which. I think is another thing too, seeing churches that have Easter bunnies and, and I'll say it too, even Santa Claus, like we're, I'm, our family is not a Santa Claus family. And, um, it was those same types of revelations that mm -hmm. I saw about the way that the world views these holidays. And, and I was like, no, I don't want anything to, I don't want anything to do with that. And, um, and I don't, I don't look down at people because they, do Easter baskets or right. because they have Santa Claus and, or they do elf on the shelf. And you know, this is, this was a personal elf conviction for my family. <laughs> All I right. Hate yeah. That guy <laughs> <laughs> and his new girlfriend or whatever it is. Oh uh, yeah. So we, 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 um, we don't do that stuff. We don't participate in that stuff. We, now we did participate one time in the, the Christian version of elves on the, elf on the shelf. I don't know if you, uh -huh. did you ever see that? It was uh -huh. like a, a shepherd, and you hid the shepherd around mm -hmm. and he was like looking for Jesus, you know? And so then the last one is like the last book. I had little books oh. that you read each time. Um, Basically leading up to the nativity. Yeah. Yeah. But, and so because it was Christian based, we're like, oh, great. Now we can do this thing with Riker and have fun with it because it's based on Christian, you know, Christian values or whatever. But then there was a realization that we were still lying about the shepherd. Cause that's the whole thing about me with Santa Claus and elf on the shelf. And like, I'm just going to say it, people. Like, a lie is a lie to me. Um, that's my personal conviction about it. I told Candace one time that we made a decision that we were going to do our very best to never lie to our kids. 
And to 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 help you out is we still right now celebrate Santa, but I believe in the same thing you are. Yeah. I think our struggle is like trying to tell our kids. Yeah. Um, because no one wants to make their kids sad or anything like that. Right. But I do believe that people will say, like, well, Christmas brings them so much joy. It doesn't bring them joy. It brings them temporary happiness. happiness yeah. You know, not eternal joy. As soon as yeah. Christmas is over, it's over and they continue on with life. You know, they they play with the toys, they get tired of them, so on. Yeah. And so now I'm trying to get to the point, like, how do I have this conversation with my seven-year-old daughter? I think she'll probably take it pretty good, but it's just it's just like a hard conversation to have because yeah. you you then you got to explain to him, yeah, we've been lying, like, yeah, I meant I've been lying to you for eleven years. <laughs> yeah, well, and I ha- I had that moment with Riker with the shepherd thing, mm-hmm. um, and you're right. I think sometimes we we avoid conversations that we think are going to be hard, but then once we get into them, they're really not that difficult. I mean, kids are so smart. Every yeah, kid, every well, kid Riker was so super smart. easy, and um. I mean, we're almost 90 minutes in, so maybe I can share the the details of, of that conversation if parents want to know um, of how that went with Riker. He was like four or five, and he just, he asked me, because mm-hmm. what, what we decided to do is we were never going to um, promote it. We weren't going to be like this hard line, like, don't say Santa Claus. No, no, right. Santa Claus yeah, is yeah, not yeah, real. Yeah. Don't say it. Like, we weren't going to be like this, like that hard line about it. We just weren't going to promote it. And we were just going to let him know that the presents came from us, not Santa Claus. And um, which we do that, yeah. But we still do Elf on a Shelf. <laughs> so, Cast well, because there's the things about the thing about Santa Claus too is I had a revelation that we were giving Santa the world was giving Santa mm-hmm. Claus God's attributes. He knows yeah. when you're sleeping. He knows when you're awake. He knows when you've been bad or good, right? And so then there's this condemnation attached to it. So be good for goodness sake you know you have to be good or you're going to get coal you're going to get a punishment and like to me that's like the exact opposite of what the gospel is and so it makes me sad when when i see christians partaking in that and they don't even realize that they because they think oh joel you're just being this is just silly and i'm like no i really don't see it that way like i think it really is a big deal because you are presenting the gospel that god loves them no matter what that Jesus paid the price for their sins and that they are accepted no matter what. Oh, I hear noise. I forgot to close that door again. But they are accepted no matter what. But then once a year, we say, oh, well, you know, don't be bad because Santa's right. watching. You know, and it's like, come on, that, that come on, brothers and sisters. <laughs> like, that just makes me sad that that's... That and that's I do that wish way, so. we could find a way to celebrate Christmas and keep... Not keep Santa, but kind of keep that that joy, that happiness that that does bring in, like the Christmas lights and the, the yeah, Christmas we st- we do Christmas trees, we do no, Christmas I know, lights, but like there's still there's still a part a of the season. We do it in a way that's it's all in celebration of the birth of Christ. Right. That's what we focus our joy. That's where the joy comes from. Is like, hey, God loved us so much that He gave us the greatest gift that we could ever get. And so we put up a Christmas tree and we decorate and we make it, we put up Christmas lights all in celebration of this occasion. Now they might've had, I looked this up one time pagan. and some of, some of the things aren't really pagan origin like people think, but some of them are. Christmas like, trees was pagan origin, but the, the Catholics to try to control that took it uh, That's not what I, I don't remember exactly. They used what to I worship trees it. and they would decorate them once a year for the, the winter yeah, solstice. There were similarities. I can't remember. I read something about it because yeah. I looked at, I looked into it, but, but what I read was, Hey, you know what? These pagan cultures became Christians, right? These pagans were converted to Christianity. And so then like, to me, there are celebrations that you can say, okay, we used to celebrate it this way. And for this reason, but you know what? Now we know this truth. Yeah, so better. now we're going to celebrate yeah. this. We're this better. Reason. Like, yeah. why stay the way you were? That's yeah. It's like so, saying, never change. Yeah. That's like the, that's the spirit telling you, the devil spirit telling you not to do it different because, well, right. this, so this is where it came from. Well, it don't matter anymore. Right. You right. Know? That's the way I see it too. So we still do Christmas trees. We, we still put up Christmas lights. We like decorating for Christmas. Yeah. We like, you know, getting ready for that. You know, it's basically. But how does a church handle it? Because I know church shouldn't get involved as far as like what you should tell your kids to believe and not to believe in a way. 
Uh, in a way, because I still. But see, there's there's I, ways that the church does it worse on the opposite end, like churches that have Santa Claus in right. the lobby so and Gate Easter had, bunnies in there. City Gate had I don't know if they had Easter bunny, but they had Santa Claus, and that's the first thing that came to my head because yeah. I'm probably you know years behind you in your walk. I'm kind of like where you were at one time in your life. Yeah, and so now I'm at that point in my life where it's like okay, I don't want to celebrate these things anymore because it's taking the glory away from God. Yeah. How do I go about this? Because, you know, I believe in the ministry. I believe that churches do good, but how do I, how do we change that atmosphere where they're not promoting Santa Claus? Yeah. And then also allowing parents to make their own decision without feeling right. like they're being condoned for celebrating condemned for yeah i think everybody should make that personal decision yeah i think so too because that like i said it was a revelation that i believe the holy spirit gave me and that and that revelation will stick with you like you have conviction then like right oh i know why i'm doing this instead of doing it out of guilt people have to be open to those types of corrections from the holy spirit to get them if people are really stuck in it's like having a hardened heart about certain things i think you can have a hardened heart towards certain things where the holy spirit's like okay like I can't, I can't minister to you about that because you're so set. And then, oh, it's just having fun. But, Santa Claus is just fun. The Easter Bunny is just fun. Let us just have fun, and we don't see it that way. Then the Holy Spirit's going to say, "Okay." Like what, what I've noticed is that the hard that hearts usually come from condemnation from somewhere else. Well, that that can be another nuance you know, to it. Yeah, like you can't tell me how to raise my yeah. kid, and it, it, instead of letting it, the Spirit actually naturally turn them to good, right? They're feeling like they're having to be termed because they feel guilty now. Right. And that guilty might still be the spirit a little bit, but it feels more worldly. Right. Like, because well, sometimes my pastor says I shouldn't do this and it shouldn't be that way. It right. should be like, oh, now they kind of like to, how I came into it. Like, I feel like this ain't right because it right. hurts my heart now versus yeah. like yeah. saying, well, I feel guilty because, you know, whatever. Right. You're right that the Holy Spirit's correction can sometimes hurt. Like, it can sometimes be like, oh, like, like I've been, I've been corrected by the Holy Spirit before, and like it felt like I got punched in the gut, you know. Like it, it was, but I knew that it's, it's, it's always in love from the Holy Spirit, right? So now there's a way to present something to speak truth and love. We're supposed to speak truth and love, mm-hmm. and so that's why I'll present something. I'll present how it was revealed to me, and I'll present what the decisions that we've made. But I will never tell someone that they shouldn't have Santa Claus in their house or that. Santa Claus is the devil, well, you know. Or, but I'm saying there's a lot of a lot of churches, a lot of members out there. That they might will, take that harder approach, yeah. yeah. And but at the so same that, time, that, again, that's, church, that's the two ends of the spectrum, right? You have that spectrum where it's yeah browbeaten, but there's and only then you have two, the other spectrum that supports it and promotes it. But there's no middle ground. I don't see a church where it's in the middle ground. Where like, why isn't there a sermon on like the Easter Bunny? Why hasn't preachers presented it? There, I, there might be, yeah. I'd say, but I have are. not seen one. Yeah. Um, where they're like doing it out of a loving, like, yeah, hey, I let's bet there look are. at this. I bet there are. I've never seen one. I'm not saying there. I'm, I'm sure there are. Yeah, I'm sure there are. The world's a big place. I'm sure that right. There's somebody out but there why, that has preached a loving. In my before. world, in my realm, in the churches that I'm around, I still haven't seen it. Yeah, it, it's one of those things. Like as a pastor, I guess it's it's difficult to have that as a teaching subject. Right. A subject of but teaching. It's so important. <sighs> I I agree. But it's hard. I guess maybe it's just I don't know. I don't know what it is then. Um, other than that, I believe that because of understanding who I am in Christ, which is what we really want to focus at my church and what we're teaching, mm-hmm. is we want people to know who their identity in Christ is, what it means, what promises they have access to, um, all of all of that stuff. The gospel, right? We want to mm-hmm. focus on the gospel. We don't necessarily, and and then we want the holy because of that. Then, as people learn and grow in that, then we then that makes I think that allows the Holy Spirit to work more in their life to be able to have these other areas of correction. And then maybe somebody comes to us and says, "Hey, what do you think about Santa Claus?" Okay, well, since you asked, I'll let you know. I'll tell you. Well, yeah, I <laughs> I agree with that. So there's some subjects but, that I think that aren't necessarily subjects to be preached from the pulpit. I guess I could say. I, that I think that that's a huge one though. Yeah, I mean, it's, I, I can agree I, with you. Something that, to consider, like, but yeah, I can understand like trying to let the Holy Spirit do its way, but like, I don't know. I see majority of the churches, like you said, it's hardline or you know, 
either they're talking about it or they're not talking about it yeah or they're talking about it well of what christmas is and then christmas comes around and they have santa claus in their 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 yeah. four year well <laughs> so, so here's the thing is is from the pulpit from because we weren't commanded to teach people what not to do right we but i thought we're commanded to preach the the gospel i thought paul told us that keep our brothers and brothers in christ so members not just men well but brothers and fellow christ so what i'm saying is there's in a check like there if is, they're doing a sin then you need to correct them. so there's a plat there's a correct platform then is what i'm getting at right so i feel um, like that's a pastor like well, so what I'm saying is, is that there are other ways than you could maybe get that information. Maybe you can do it in a life group or a small group, or, yeah. um, you know, you could do it in a, an encouraging, uh, you know, we have like, um, an e weekly email that we do and there's a word of encouragement and that comes, um, our lead pastor writes a lot of them, but you know, I've, I've written several of them. Um, and our pastoral team will kind of take turns sometimes writing those. So that might be a, a way to get that type of information. Now, that's what I'm saying is, is I think that there's some subject matters that shouldn't necessarily be preached from the pulpit because from the pulpit, that should be the focus of the gospel of what we of what I said earlier about what our focus is about people finding out and understanding all that their God has uh, all that they're meant to be that God wants them to be in Christ rooted in Christ. Those other things, those edifying things. That's what I would consider an edifying thing. Those can be done on other platforms, podcasts or you know what i mean we did a podcast about it um on my pastor's anthony wade ministries there's a podcast you can go look it up on his uh, youtube channel about um christmas and we we talked about this exact very stuff and there was someone uh, there was a testimony within our church family listen to the podcast and we presented it and i think we presented it in a in a very loving way again just kind of shared a lot of what my uh what was had been revealed to me and what Candace and I had come into agreement on how we handled it with our kids, the, the conversations that we had with our, our kids. Um, like I said, I started to tell the story Riker had um, asked me, you know, is Santa Claus real? And I said, well, what do you think? And he said, no, I don't think he is. And I said, well, you're right. He's not. And so then that opened up the door to have this right. conversation about how Santa Claus Can morphed be, into what yeah. it is now um, that there was a St. Nicholas and, you know, kind of all of these things. And that our focus, what's important to us and our family is, is we want our focus to be that Christmas is about Jesus. And he totally understood it. And he totally, and, and I even said, I said, it's not your place to tell your classmates that, that Santa right. Claus isn't real. You just be Jesus. You just tell them about Jesus when you can, you know, tell them that they're loved, pray for him if you want to, but it's not your place to say, you yeah. know, you know, Santa Claus isn't real. So I guess I and he I, totally I can, received that perfectly. I can see where you're saying like probably not a great thing to do from the pulpit because if you're televising it, children are going to see it, and yeah. that's does that is definitely a conversation a parent needs to have. Right. Not necessarily, it's not going to be received well from the pulpit. Right. There's some subjects that need to be talked about that need to be done in an edifying way, um, which edifying just means to build people up, right? Um, or plant that seed, like get yeah. them thinking, curious, and right. say, "Oh, let me do my own research on it. Let me see what the word says versus right. let it Wikipedia let it minister says. to me yeah. what that means." And you know, with my daughter, we it was something similar. We never promoted it. And one time, she said something about getting presents from Santa Claus, and I said, "No, sweetie, we we've never told you that. We always tell you that. You know, we get your gifts. Mm -hmm. We get your gifts because we love you, and because God loved us so much that He gave us Jesus. That's why we give you gifts at Christmas time." And um, and she was like, wait a minute. So Santa Claus isn't real? I'm like, no, baby, Santa Claus isn't real. And so again, the same conversation, like, okay, but it's not your place to let your friends know that Santa Claus isn't real. You know, they need to have that conversation with their parents and, you know, um, and so we always make sure that our kids weren't going to be the spoilers uh, yeah, for other people, I, I trust guess. my kids not to be spoilers. <laughs> well, not that I they mean, would do it on purpose. Yeah. They're Which just it, very absent-minded, right. you know, That's, for that seven could and 11-year-old. It definitely happened, and I would totally give my kids grace if it did. Um, but at least I at least had that conversation yeah. with them. Like, don't go and you know do this. Um, it's not your place to do that. But um, so I forget where I was going. But um, but yeah, that, that that's just kind of like a a little bit of a taste of the conversations that we. Oh, I was going to. That's where I was going with. So I shared all that on that podcast mm -hmm. um, uh, that we did together. 
And so it was uh, my lead pastor, his wife, and me, the three of us had this conversation about Santa Claus and Elf on the Shelf came up. And I shared the thing too about, I had to have a conversation with Riker about the shepherd because because he was talking about, oh, my kids, why can't we do Elf on the Shelf? And I said, well, you know why? Like, it's not like you want to do it anyways, even though you know it's not real. And he was like, oh, I know, but they just do like all these fun things. And I'm like, I get it. Like, it's tough to see I your friends not want to do going through, you know, fun stuff and you're not being a part of it. And I, we have, I think social media plays a big part. Of that it too, does. You see the parents doing it. Yeah. You know, you feel like you the FOMO yeah. thing is real. Right. And, um, you know, and so I tell him one of the things that I tell him too, I said, listen, we live our life differently than a lot of people in the world do. And so sometimes it's going to feel like we're missing out on things, but you know, we're really not like, it's just, you know, that's, that's kind right. of a, almost like a, deception of the enemy right um and he's like yeah i know you're right you know and uh and so he was like well wait a minute what about the shepherd and i like and all of a sudden in a moment it just hit me and i realized that we've been lying to him about the shepherd we've been doing the exact same thing that we didn't like about elf on the shelf we did it with the shepherd and it just hit me all of a sudden right when he asked that i just re- made the realization and i was like all right, buddy, I have to repent. I have to mm-hmm. apologize to you. I apologize. We we lied about the shepherd, and I didn't realize it. I didn't realize we were lying until just now when you just asked me that. And I said, so I apologize, dude. I apologize that that we we lied to you about that. Um, you know, I said, we got caught up in wanting to try to be like the elf on the shelf thing, mm-hmm. but not elf on the shelf. And uh, and I said, I, I apologize. Yeah, the shepherd's not real either. And he was like, I knew it, (laughs) but, uh, but yeah, so, but he was fine. Like, you know, we, I apologized and, you know, and he said, I forgive you and, and we were good. So, um, so anyways, that's just my experience, uh, with all that. And, um, and the same things with the Easter bunny, the same thing with the tooth fairy, like, yeah, we, if they lose a tooth and we'll be like, yeah, like, you know, if you want to put money, we'll give you money for the tooth. Um, but we don't do it because of the tooth fairy. Like we just, we just decided not to, like I said, we just decided to try to do our very best. Now, again, we that was a, <laughs> an example of where we missed the mark. Uh, but the moment that we realized it, we corrected it. So the, the last thing I'll say about it is from that podcast and sharing that experience, we had someone from our church family write in and say that they had never considered any of that stuff about Santa Claus before. And they were thanking us for sharing our experience because she was like, um, you know, the, once we started to think about it, like everything you said made perfect sense. Mm-hmm. And she was like, so we sat the boys down and we just ripped the bandaid off and told and apologized and told them, you know, that, that Santa Claus actually wasn't real. And that, you know, and then she kind of, you know, they had a, a conversation with their kids about it and their kids were totally fine. Mm-hmm. Like their kids were totally like, Oh, like we get it. Like, thank you for telling us. Like they appreciated the conversation, which Riker is always that way too. My son is always, seems very appreciative of I think every the real is. conversations that I have with them. So I, think, I don't, I can't imagine my kids having a breakdown and crying. Right. Yeah. And what's funny is I'm very rough around the edges as a person. If people don't know me, I am. My <laughs> wife can tell, tell you all the stories <laughs> about it. But now like when things come up as far as like new stages of their life of what something like if a Santa Claus comes in, like a fictitious character. Yeah. I'm, I immediately just go, you know, they're not real. You know, like the tooth fairy started coming up and I was like, I got to put my pillow on the tooth fairy. I was like, you can put it on there. But like there ain't no tooth fairy. Yeah. And she's like, oh, what do you mean? I was like, well, I sneak in your room and I take your tooth out and I, well, what do you do to the tooth? I was like, we throw it in the garbage. <laughs> you don't keep it? <laughs> well, we kept Emmett's, but we're like, why are we keeping these? Because we learned you're not going to make those weird uh creepy dolls well with the kids teeth i don't know about those that's this is the first time i hear about creepy dolls with teeth but sheila kept all of courtney's teeth and then gave them to courtney and courtney's like <laughs> what am i going to do this and it's like the realization like why are we keeping these teeth Dude, you gotta, so we you stopped keeping this. teeth i don't know how to show you i don't know how to spin this to you to show it to you i don't want to see you know how i am about dolls dude i don't want to see that <laughs> My biggest fear are porcelain. So these dolls. are these are literally like baby teeth. I don't want. I don't want to see. It. You're gonna give me nightmares. <laughs> you have to go back and look at it. Not Dude, gonna, they are so weird it. looking. Cut that. Cut this out. <laughs> it, like I don't know why anyone would ever want to do that with their kids' teeth. 
This is so weird. Anyways, but <laughs> um, so yeah, so yeah, I think it's uh, I don't know how to how to disconnect from this. We're an hour and forty five minutes in, but uh, but yeah, we're that way with with Easter. It just happened. They don't they get stuff for Easter, but we don't. Oh yeah, we bought our kids like sunglasses, and I think they they know the Easter Bunny's not real. I've yeah. already explained that to them. The Santa Claus thing is a little bit more of a tougher conversation because we kind of like and it's more ingrained. It. Yeah, yeah, we yeah. conditioned them more into yeah. it, and so now I gotta. I'll, I'll eventually just do it. I think Emmett knows. Emmett's he's funny. Like when he like starts discovering things. Yeah, he, he like asks like questions like, "So does Santa know?" I'm like, <laughs> "I don't know. You already know the answer." Yeah, he just wants us to hear us like solidify his right his thought process. Yeah, Riker's funny too. We so we had a maybe I'll finish with this. I I won't give the full story, but uh, I had a conversation with him one time. I think he's like first grade, second grade. I can't remember what year which year it was. But Candace came home one time and she was like, Riker asked about. He said that he knows that the babies are inside the mommies, oh. but how do the babies get out? And she was like, I don't know what to tell him. And I know that you don't want us to ever lie. So you're going to have to talk to him. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, all right, that's fine. I don't care. So, um, so we get to the, cause this used to be, it was when he was at Bowman. That's why I was thinking it was for either first or second grade. So we're in the, the waiting, we're like, we're waiting in the drop off line in the morning. We'd always, it, we'd have 20 minutes probably to, to talk and stuff. So I go, Hey, your mom told me that you asked about how the babies get out of the mommy. And he's like, oh yeah. And I'm like, do you want to talk about it now? And he's like, yeah. And he like got up in the seat, like, like, you know, he was like all invested. Like, yeah. He was like, just ready to hear it. And so I gave him an anatomy class. Right. And I'm like, okay, well, you know what dad has, you know what mom has, you know what Stevie has. Um, and I just, I laid it out for him, you know, anatomy 101. This is the baby comes out at this spot. And he was like, all right, all right. And I'm like, so like does that make sense and he's like yeah i'm like are you glad that i told you and he's like yeah <laughs> and then now i thought the next question was going to be how does wow. the baby get in there and then i was like oh man that's gonna have to be a conversation for later but stevie so the reason i say that is because recently stevie said something about so, so i started asking questions again with with candace or talking about the baby oh that's what it was i think it was like a movie like where the stork comes mm -hmm. And she was like, no, that's not how babies get here. And she was like, well, how do they get here? And Riker's like, <laughs> he's like getting excited. And he's like, and she's like, well, I don't know. I don't know if I can talk to you about that yet. And he's like, just tell her mom. Just tell her how the babies get out. <laughs> <laughs> it was hilarious. So, oh, that is funny. <laughs> yeah. So me and Riker have some real conversations. but And Stevie eventually, too. Yeah. She's, I'll have to share she's getting my there. conversation with Emmett and I probably shared it with you about reading the book. Oh yeah, yeah, the, the full was, sex talk yeah, or whatever. Uh, yeah, you got any questions? Awful <laughs> for both of us. <laughs> yeah, I'm not saying that there won't be like a hint of awkwardness with me doing it, but I don't, I don't really foresee me because I've always had, I've always strived to have a very open dialect dialogue, however you want to say it, with Riker, and. I want him to know that because I want him to come to me for information. Mm -hmm. I don't want him to go. I don't want him to get it from his friends. You know, I want him to get the real answer because sometimes he'll come to me and he'll be like, Hey, did you know this? And they'll say it. And I'm like, that's not true. And he'll be like, what do you mean? And then like, I'll just lay it out for him. Like, where'd you hear that? School? Some kid tell you that? Yeah. So-and-so told me, okay, well, you know, how many times have I told you you should always double check with me before <laughs> you accept something well, as being true? Well, our kids are homeschooled, so they don't get those. Oh, yeah, there you go. So, like, they're kind of sheltered in that way. Like, yeah. they're not weird. Like, I know a lot of people think yeah. homeschooling No, weird. my whole perspective on that has changed. Yeah, but uh, but he doesn't get some of the worldly views or an advantage, learning yeah. the potty words and, you know, all this other stuff. Uh, so... I feel like if it happened that way, it would be a lot more fluid instead of me saying, all right, we're going to learn about this today. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I've even offered to pay his, his aunt, Brittany, who's a nurse to come teach him, you know, you can pay me. The, I'll teach him. 
Okay. I don't care. I knew you would do stuff for money. I'll Call lay it me. out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm going to be a rich pastor by being a substitute uh, anatomy teacher for oh, homeschoolers. Awful. Yeah, it doesn't. It, I, not that it doesn't bother me at all. Like, like there is, like I said, I think there'd be a hint of awkwardness, but I'd be able to. The push awkwardness it and, comes from like not being able to make it fluid. Like yeah. I said, if he heard it from somebody and said, "Hey, Dad, what are, about that?" Like if he engaged what does the this conversation, mean? like yeah. what does you know whatever means, then I can say, "Oh, okay, yeah." But me just like sitting them down on the couch, like I did the first one, I'm like, "Okay, this is it's like yeah." Bleh. Like yeah. you want well and maybe that's just something for you to pray about and just be like lord open these doors for me to have these conversations when i need to have them because <laughs> yeah because that that's the thing i think sometimes um you know this this isn't like an indictment on my parents i love my parents but i don't ever remember having that conversation with my parents i never had that conversation with i parents. like i don't ever never had the sex talk i never had drug I learned talk it from school well we learned yeah like fifth grade sex ed that's why maybe they taught in school not prior not fifth grade that. it wasn't fifth grade was it i thought it was a barry barry was six seventh and eighth so it was one of those grade. years you think it was six i was thinking it was junior high isn't sixth grade did we have high? health in sixth grade isn't no sixth grade junior high no sixth grade it was barry middle school then because it was six seventh and eighth so what's sixth grade now then it's part of intermediate very intermediate it's fifth and sixth now barry mm -hmm. Anyways, those are semantics, I guess. But I don't, I don't remember it being sixth grade. But I don't know. Is, is sixth grade? I remember being at Barry, whatever grade it was. Yeah. I remember doing it in like the basement area, like back by. But the thing the is, music is, I don't. Class. I don't ever remember understanding, even if it was in health class, because I remember watching the movie in health class of like the Miracle of Birth or whatever that movie was yeah. called. Um. But I don't ever remember making the connection. I'm just going to go find that movie and love play of it. the actual, <laughs> yeah, of the actual sexual act, right? right. Um, and, and so, like, I don't remember ever my parents, and maybe they didn't. I just don't remember. But I don't remember having that conversation with my parents. And so that's one thing that I'm trying to do with with Riker is making it known that, and because, and again, this is not an indictment on my mom. I love my mom, and if she listens to this, it's okay. But for the longest time, and you might remember this, for the longest time, I thought nipples were called gizzles because yeah. that's what my mom called them. I remember them. you saying it to me once. Yeah. I was like, what are you talking about? <laughs> I'm like, ow, you pinched my gizzle. <laughs> yeah, that's what it was. You like gave me a purple nurple. And I was like, ow, you pinched my gizzle. And you were like, your gizzle? What's a gizzle? And I felt like, mom, you like made me, <laughs> made me think this was a gizzle my entire life. Like all the way up to whatever that was that that happened. Whatever it was obviously too old yeah. to not know that it was called a nipple. Um, so I think about those times and I'm like, ah, I'm not gonna do that to Riker. Like I'm Riker's. Glad I, I'm glad I was able to teach you something. Yeah. <laughs> now we still have silly words. That's the thing. Yeah, is we still do the silliness, but he also knows what they're really called. Like one of our favorite things I posted about this one time, because there was something that somebody had posted about knowing the correct anatomical yeah. terms and all this stuff for safety. Um, which I get coming from a background of the juvenile court yeah. and stuff and abuse children and stuff. I get that part of it. And so it was important for us to, for him to know the real names, but like, we still laugh when we say nuts and balls yeah. and like, we still like well, crack up and stuff like that. When you told us that story, every time we go to a Bengals game or a Reds game, yeah. me and him just started going, get your nuts. Get your <laughs> sucky nuts. Yeah. So we we're always laughing about that. Uh, but he knows what they are, yeah. what their, their, their testicles. Yeah. Emmett's the same way. Yeah. And, you know, Courtney's more firm on like making sure we use the proper terms. I'm always like, it just flows better when you use yeah. As long as they know. What yeah. They, they know the proper term. Like if they went to a doctor and the doctor says, how's this? They know what they're talking about. Right. But at home, let's just use the slang because it's yeah. more comfortable. Yeah. I did that with Stevie one time. I, I said something, um, which the very first time it was, it did it like it slipped me up. Like I, cause I was starting to say vagina to her and she was like three and, um, maybe she was like potty training or something. Mm -hmm. I don't remember. And I like stumbled over the word. It was so like, I was like, okay, make sure you wipe your vagina, <laughs> your vagina. It's your vagina. It's your vagina. <laughs> We're adults here. Yeah. Well, I am. <laughs> yeah. And she was like, what? What's a vagina? <laughs> I'm like, well, that's what your private parts are called. And um, 
and so like you know there, yeah. there's been moments like that but at first it was kind of like uh yeah. anyways. Way, way to tie up the podcast here. yeah we'll end, <laughs> we'll end with that send me your uh everybody listening send me your thoughts on how i should approach these subjects with my kids because i need go. all the help or share your stories in yeah. the comments i need too. i need all the help i can get if you've uh and then you can also tell yeah. us if you um great funny have stories these, i mean they're they're all they're all of these funny teeth stories. dolls i'm gonna show them after we get off here. if you got teeth dolls i'm not coming <laughs> to your house <laughs> so all right we're uh we're almost at two hours so we'll um before uh jeff's wife gets mad at him again <laughs> I think he got grounded from the pot. That's why that, it took us so long to do another podcast. Yeah. He was grounded. That was a uh, was a war when I went home. <laughs> All right, just kidding a little bit. Uh, no, I was actually on vacation for a week, so that's why we haven't had any activity yet. But um, I'm feeling getting back into the grind here. Get some more stuff out to you guys um, to give our two cents on, and hopefully that makes too much sense. Yeah, keep so. the opinions coming. We we like them. Yeah, and put comments, put your feedback in the comments too. Share them with me too. Start follow me on social media or something, something so that I can start getting in on the yeah. uh, the feedback. Don't just share it with him. Jeez. Yeah. All right, um, that's it. Again, I still don't know quite how to end this yet. Yeah. So happy Easter, post Easter. Yeah, or post Resurrection Sunday. Yeah. <laughs> <I'm just kidding. laughs> bye bye.